This week, we're excited to be exploring the historic Scottish town of St Andrews. The idyllic seaside town is mainly known for its grand golf courses, historic sites, acclaimed university and the home of the cafe Prince William and Kate Middleton had their first date. Before we look into what modern day St Andrews looks like, let's see how St Andrews began. While for thousands of years this quaint little town has been known as St Andrews, it hasn't always been that way. Historians have found the earliest name of the town was Sen Rigmonade. This can be broken down into three easier parts. Sen means head, rig meaning king and monade meaning moor in Old Gaelic. The name St Andrews derives from the town's claim to be the resting place of the remains of the Apostle Andrew. While this small town has seen many changes and developments, there's no surprise that during the Scottish Reformation of 1560, the town fell into decline. At one point, the university even considered moving out of the town due to the downward trend. However, St Andrew spent years reversing the damage caused by the Reformation and the War of the Three Kingdoms. And in the 19th century, the town started to expand beyond the medieval boundaries. It created more houses and new streets to bring in trade. The expansion worked and the town's hardships and decline was finally over. Bringing us to the now infamous St Andrews that we know and love today. While the town is known for its influential role in the Scottish history, its key claim to fame is a tenuous link to golf. St Andrews has seven public golf courses and a few private courses. This little town is a hub for all things golf. And while there are seven public golf courses, the most famous and traditional one is the Old Course. The old course is considered by many to be the home of golf. The sport was first played on the links at St Andrews in the early 15th century, and golf was a very popular sport in Scotland. However, in 1457, James II of Scotland banned the game because young men were playing too much golf and not practising their archery. In 1750, a group of 22 noblemen, professors and landowners founded the well-known Society of St Andrews Golfers, which is still around today. The Old Course is the home of the Open Championship, which is the oldest golf major championships. The Old Course is full of challenging aspects and even the most professional golfers struggle with it. The terrain boasts of 112 bunkers, endless hills and hollows. To the true golf enthusiast, these challenges have their own names and legends. One notable landmark on the course is the Swilcan Bridge. It is a small stone bridge located between the 1st and 18th fairways on the old course. The bridge is thought to have been built over 700 years ago to allow shepherds to get their livestock across. The historic Roman arch is a perfect backdrop for the picturesque photo and many golfers pay respect and homage to the bridge. And of course, there are many famous golfers who have had their photo taken at the Swilkin Bridge. Continuing with the theme of golf, St Andrews is the home of the R&A Golf Museum. The museum has over 500 years of golf and history displayed for the public to view. Exhibits include historic equipment, memorabilia and artwork, documentation, the history of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club and the rules and terminology of the game, with fascinating displays of artefacts that have shaped and moulded the world of golf. The museum is home to displays of golf outfits throughout the years. From the traditional golf trousers to the fashionable golf caps, the exhibit explores the evolution of the attire and of course the importance of Scottish tartan in the sport. Most interestingly, maybe the array of golf balls on show. Golf balls belonging to world famous golfers and balls that have won them the championships. The exhibit also has many interactive details where you can challenge your golf knowledge. One important one is the What Club video. This is a fun little video to help you choose the best club for your swing. There are so many aspects of golf that this wonderful museum covers. From the history of ball making to the famous faces behind the clubs, there is ample to explore and proudly on display is a plethora of trophies that dazzle the viewer. Many are filled with the names of champions of the sport. If golf is your passion, then this museum is definitely worth visiting. The history behind the great sport starts here in St Andrews and the museum reflects the proud Scottish roots that the golf has bloomed from. Along with the golfing experience, St Andrews brings a host of other attractions, my favourite being the gorgeous Botanic Gardens. This breathtaking place is not only a lovely place to see flowers in bloom, but the gardens is a conservation experiment. It is exploring the ways of ecology and evolution that unfold in the plant kingdom. The site spans over 18 acres and includes an enchanting rock garden, a rhododendron glade, pond and pintum, and many more exciting hidden gems. The gardens are a pivotal place to educate the next generation on taking care of the planet and of course preserving the plants and its ecosystem. 
They also offer guided tours for schools and even do outreach programmes. This botanic garden is accessible to all and suitable for the entire family and a place you can enjoy all year round. If you are a keen follower of the royal family, it goes without saying that the town of St Andrews plays a very important role in the lives of both Prince William and Kate Middleton. The small cafe, North Point, is rumoured to be the setting for William and Kate's first date. While this has never been officially confirmed, there is no question that the lovers did spend many an afternoon together at the cafe, bonding over coffee and cake. The two met at the university and pursued a quiet relationship while both studying hard. It wasn't until 2007, two years after finishing at the University of St Andrews, that the couple announced their involvement with each other. And just three short years later, they were engaged. And a short while after that, they got married and they now have three children together. To think that if their paths did not cross, the future of our monarchy would look very different. And of course, we would not have been graced with the beautiful cake coat that the Duchess made popular. While the University of St Andrews was founded in 1413, it remains a highly accredited university and it is currently ranked as the best university in the UK, ahead of both Oxford and Cambridge. There are many buildings on and off campus that the university owns. However, the oldest building is Dean's Court, which is a student hall of residence. It is also thought that the building originated in the 12th century and is arguably the oldest dwelling house in the town of St Andrews. The university has produced many successful scholars, including the Royals, Ian McDermott, James II of Scotland, John Cleese, and of course many more notable people. With a motto of ever to excel and holding the title of the most international university in Scotland, with more than 130 countries represented in the 2021 to 2022 student numbers. There are many fun and quirky traditions that the university have, one being Raisin Monday Foam Fight. Every year, hundreds of first-year students dressed in fancy dress by their academic parents gather at St Salvador's Quad for the annual Raisin Monday foam fight. Lots of foamy fun and great memories to be had with new friends. St Andrews University offers many courses and it's definitely worth looking into if you are looking to pursue your studying goals with the support of award-winning staff and lecturers. While taking a walk around this gorgeous town, you will likely come across the Martyrs Monument. The monument stands tall and is a beacon of religious freedom and tremendous courage. But what's the history behind it? In the mid-16th century, the ideas of Renaissance humanism, critical of aspects of the established Catholic Church, began to reach Scotland, particularly through the contacts between Scottish and continental scholars. The work of Patrick Hamilton was especially influential in promoting Protestantism and the reaction of misgivings and abuse of the Catholic Church. It would land him in a very serious trouble, Patrick Hamilton was one of the first critics of the Catholic Church in Scotland to be tried and burnt at the stake in 1528 for promoting the doctrines of Martin Luther. Others who followed in his footsteps are commemorated at this monument too. The monument is an iconic landmark and if you find yourself in St Andrews, it is well worth a visit. This internationally renowned location is one of the most idyllic towns in Scotland. The High Street is a unique blend of historic and modern architecture with original cobbled roads and niche little cafes, it feels like you're walking in the heart of Paris. The town is well known for its charity shops, cafes, gift shops and of course the busy golf shops. There are quite a few golf shops but the golf shop of St Andrews is the go-to for all your golfing essentials. The term shop till you drop certainly comes to mind when I think of St Andrews. The town hosts many little boutiques and jewellery shops to admire or to keep your partner busy while you squeeze in a round of golf. The pier at St Andrews is one of the most peaceful places to visit and one I never miss on a trip to the east coast of Fife. The line of the present North Pier at Shoreward ends date back to the 16th century, although the present form of the pier is largely the product of 18th and 19th century rebuilding. The university take part in the traditional pier walk along the harbour walls of St Andrews before the start of the new academic year. Every Sunday after chapel service, students in their iconic St Andrews red gowns walk to the end of the pier, climb up the ladder and walk back along the highest part of the pier wall. They do this to commemorate a former student, John Honey. On the 3rd of January in 1800, John Honey rescued the members of a crew of the Janet of Macduff, which had run aground on the east sands of St Andrews. He helped save the crew by relentlessly swimming from the wreck to the shore with one man at a time. He did this five times before eventually collapsing on the beach. 
Sadly, many years later, John Honey died as a result of the unresolved health issues following the accident. Students at the University of St Andrews commemorate Honey's courage in various ways, one being the annual peer walk before term starts, which is one of the university's oldest traditions. There are many places to visit within St Andrews that are of historic significance, one being St Andrews Castle. The castle is now unfortunately just ruined due to an attack during the wars of Scottish independence. The castle was home to some very notable people throughout history, including James I of Scotland. And interestingly, the castle also served as a prison too, housing notorious miscreants who fell under the bishop's jurisdiction. Another place to visit is the ruins of the Grand Cathedral. In June 1559, during the Reformation, a Protestant mob inspired by the preaching of John Knox ransacked the cathedral. The interior of the building was destroyed. The cathedral fell into decline following the attack and became a source of building material for the town. By 1561, it had been abandoned and left to fall into ruin. At about the end of the 16th century, the central tower apparently gave way, carrying with it the north wall. Today, the cathedral remains a ruin, but you can enjoy a thoughtful walk through the grounds and take in the history. There are many more little honeypots that are hidden in St Andrews, and we could talk for hours and hours about the history of the town and the importance of its influence in the world of golf. However, it's time for us to say goodbye we hope you enjoyed discovering more about the lovely town of St Andrews. Check out our website and subscribe to our YouTube channel, email newsletter and social media to stay up to date on all of our new content.